Welcome everybody to another edition of the Dabnode Crash Course. Today we're going to be going through uh, Smooth, which is our latest product release. We just unveiled this uh, yesterday and we're very, very excited to share Smooth with everyone. Let's start by uh, going through what is Smooth. So Smooth is Dabnode, SMEV Smoothing Pool, and what it allows is that instead of getting rewards Every time you propose a block, you get together with other solo stakers. Uh, it doesn't matter what their setup is. It doesn't matter if they're running Dapp Node, Avado, uh, a CLI tool. It's pretty much the same. This is made for solo stakers so that they can get together their chances uh, to propose a block and basically share all of the MEV rewards that they get. This uh, documentation, I won't really go uh, through all of it. Like if you wanna, uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the specifics of, of Smooth, I would recommend you this section of uh, deep dive into Smooth so that you can uh, get a better idea of how each of these work. The way the way Smooth works is that uh, you subscribe your validator uh, by changing the fee recipient address, which we're gonna be doing today. And that's it. Uh, if, if you want to start accumulating rewards at the moment, you are going to put down a collateral of 0.01 ETH, which will be given back to you once you propose a block. But this is mostly to prevent spammers, just people that are subscribing to Smooth, but they have no intention of sharing their, their rewards. So this is basically how it works. You have these two ways, uh, two methods of uh, subscribing your validator. First, we're gonna go through the automatic uh, subscription. This is the simplest way to, to subscribe your validator to, to Smooth. And it's basically just by changing this fee recipient address. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to my tab node. And then for the purposes of this exercise, we're gonna be doing this in a girly validator, but the process for Ethereum mainnet is exactly the same. You should notice no difference here. So we'll go into Web3 Signer instead of the uh, main Web3 Signer. And then we're going to go to the UI. We are going to basically see our listed validators. Uh, a couple of days ago, I just listed this new validator, which has my uh, default fee recipient. So let's select this one, go to the Beacon Chain Explorer to see this is how it's uh, looking. And yeah, like it, it already has a withdrawal address set up, which is uh, my my main address. This is important because you're going to be controlling the smooth interface from the withdrawal address that is associated with your validator. So this is something very important. So if we click on subscribe, um, this, is, this is a very important note. This is the girly version of it. So the fee recipient address is not going to be the same as the one that we use in mainnet. So I just wanted to clarify this before uh, we keep moving. We keep moving on. So I'm gonna copy this uh, fee recipient, and then I'm gonna go and take it to the uh, Dapno brain. I'm gonna select the validator that I want to change the fee recipient from, and I'm gonna apply changes. So from now on. Uh, this uh, validator is going to be sending all of its fees to the pool. And once you've proposed the first block, then you'll be subscribed to Smooth. And so far, this is the only thing that you need to do for uh, the automatic subscription. But then there's this small change in our manual subscription, which consists of depositing collateral of 0.01 ETH. And this will allow you to start accumulating rewards from the moment that you uh, deposit this collateral and you get this collateral back once you propose a first block as claimable rewards. So this is the way we prevent spam uh, participation. So let's do this on Girly. So another common question is, if I go to the stakers menu, I'll see that there's another fee recipient option here. So the way this works is that uh, basically this fee recipient is a, is a fallback. In case there's uh, no fee recipient assigned for a validator in the key manager, this will be the fallback option. But 
this one is the one that will persist. So if you have different validators and you want to assign different fee recipients or you don't want to subscribe all of them to Smooth for, for some reason, this option in the brain will be the one that will be persistent. Uh, there we go. So it, it already detected it. It's already subscribed. So let's take the next steps. Uh, it's going to do an MEV check to see which relays you are subscribed to. And then Ingerly is uh, asking for 0 0.08 ETH, but in mainnet, this collateral will be of uh, 0.01 ETH. So let's go ahead and deposit this amount so that we can run a manual subscription. So now our second validator is subscribed and we're gonna see in the pending balance our collateral, which should become claimable balance once we propose a block. This is, this is also another uh, really cool option. If you're not ready to subscribe to Smooth yet and still you want to support decentralization and incentivize solo stakers to subscribe to Smooth, donations are also a great way to do this and to still support the pool. Uh, another, another common question is, how do I unsubscribe? So you can definitely change your free recipient at any time and you can unsubscribe at any time. If you want to change your fee recipient, first remember to unsubscribe because otherwise you will get banned and you will not be able to rejoin the pool later on. And yeah, you can, you can just do it at any time. But yes, the, the rewards that you had accumulated, you will lose them. So it's just better to do this. This is a little bit inconvenient when it comes, like if people want to shift their, um, their fee recipient address to another thing, it's a little bit inconvenient. But any alternative to this, is worse. And also unsubscribing from Smooth uh, works pretty much under the same logic because if you only can claim rewards every time you propose a block, then the best time to actually exit Smooth would be after you successfully propose a block. This way you can grab all of the rewards that you've been accumulating from other solo stakers and live without having this uh, pending balance because if you have uh, a pending balance and then you unsubscribe your validator, that amount, uh, you won't get any of it and, it and it will be split among the current subscribers to Smooth. You can click directly on unsubscribe. Yep, so this way, I can directly unsubscribe from the contract and then I can just go back to the key manager and, you know, change this fee receipt into something else. In this way, uh, you'll be successfully unsubscribing from Smooth. So let me go back to Discord and see if we have any questions from the audience. At the beginning, I can only do step one. Well. An automatic subscription would actually be the first step, uh, GMRC, because you would need to change the fee recipient and that's it. That's pretty much everything you need to enter smooth. However, you won't be accumulating some of the other rewards until you propose a block. So this is where the manual subscription uh, comes in. And if you put down this collateral, this is how you start accumulating rewards from, from that moment. Uh, there's a very good question from Aria uh, that says, if you have multiple validators, are they treated totally independently? This is a very good question because the answer is not as obvious uh, as it might be. They are not. They are not treated completely independently. Of course, any donation is completely independently, but when, sorry, donation, any um, MEV is uh, completely in the uh, so MEV block that is proposed by any validator is completely independent. I'm sorry, but when it comes to claiming rewards, if these validators, if these multiple validators that you have added have the same withdrawal address, the rewards will be aggregated under the same withdrawal address. So when you claim you will only be able to claim all of the aggregate that all of the validators uh, that are under that withdrawal address have earned. 
That means that if you have earned, um, if you have two validators and they have different withdrawal addresses, you can claim independently one or the other. But if they have the same withdrawal address, when you click claim, you will get the rewards corresponding to both validators, given, of course, that they both have claimable rewards, meaning that you have, um, that you have uh, proposed a block with both of them. What happens if you miss a block? Yeah, so uh, the, the, let me give a little bit more context on this. We've designed this to be for solo stakers, right? So we've designed this to be extremely permissive with, uh, with the way it works. So if you miss a block, you get a yellow card, which means basically nothing happens. You keep participating. You will obviously not be able to claim the rewards because as we said, you can only claim rewards once you propose a block, but you will continue to accumulate rewards. But you know what? Because it happens. Solo validators um, have sometimes problems. They go on holidays and the machine fails and they cannot fix it. And it can happen that you propose a block when the machine is down. And I mean, we are solo stakers as well, so we know that this is um, that that this is uh, that this happens. So you'll get a a yellow card, and a yellow card means nothing. Basically, means that you continue uh, accumulating rewards. If you fail two, that means that you might uh, that yeah that you you might not be paying a lot of attention to your validator, and you're not contributing to the pool either. So in this case, you will stop accumulating rewards. Now, I need to check whether you lose the ones that you have or not. Um, I don't think you lose the ones that you have. Uh, but you, you stop accumulating new ones. You stop accumulating new ones, meaning that you will not be counted for uh, the rewards until you propose a block. Once you propose a block, you will move to yellow card. And that responds to OT's question. What happens if you have a yellow card as soon as you propose the next block? you move into no cards, no warnings whatsoever. All rewards from staking go to the pool or just from block proposing an MEV. Yeah, so um, there's two types of reward when it comes to uh, uh, like Ethereum or pr proof of stake as, uh, as Ethereum does it, which are execution layer rewards and consensus layer rewards. The MEV smoothing pool only touches consensus layer, uh, sorry, execution, execution layer rewards, execution layer rewards. The consensus layer are still yours. You know, the, all the rewards that you get um, for attesting and for proposing a block, um, those, are, con those are yours and yours alone, and those are fixed by the protocol. It is only on the execution layer rewards, which are, high fees, for example, you know, like the, the transaction fees and the MEV rewards. Those are the ones that go to the pool. Going uh, back to the questions uh, about this uh, yellow card and red card systems, uh, this uh, state machine overview is something that you can find in our documentation. So basically, this is how it works. Like if you uh, are an active validator, and then you miss a proposal, you'll get a, a yellow card. And then if you get another missed proposal, then you go to the red card. So this is kind of like the flow of, of, of it. And, and uh, yeah, this is uh, something that you can dive deeper in if uh, you visit our, our documentation. Um, yeah, I just saw, I just read into the documentation. Thanks for showing it right here. As we can see, the state of the red card. So when you get a red card means that you stop. You do not earn rewards until a valid block has been proposed by this validator. Which means that the ones that you have, uh, the ones that you had accumulated, you don't lose them. So again, um, it is okay to, to miss two blocks. You will not be accumulating new rewards, but you will not lose the ones that you have accumulated. Um, Mad Hatter, if we connected our wallet and we don't see our validator, how can we troubleshoot? Well, you have to connect from your withdrawal address. If you are connecting from your withdrawal address, you should definitely see your validator under there. And if, if you want to check, go to bitcoin.in, so Bitcoin Chain, 
Uh, look for your validator and look at what do you have set as withdrawal credential. This is going to be the wallet from which you have to connect. If you have a 0.0x00, you have not changed from VLS to um, execution. So yeah. The 0.01 is for manual subscription has to come from the withdrawal address. Uh, yes, you do. You cannot subscribe validators that are not owned by you. And this is a security measure uh, because I could be, for example, if I can subscribe validators that do not belong to me, then I could be subscribing your validators. You wouldn't know about it. And then when you propose a block, and of course, because you don't know that you're subscribed to the pool, you send the ETH to somewhere that's not the, the smoothing pool. That means that you will be banned from the smoothing pool. And if in the future you want to join the smoothing pool, you'll be like, why am I banned? And it's because somebody else maliciously subscribed you into the pool and then the pool banned you because you didn't know about it. So this is why it needs to come from the withdrawal address. So Matt Hatter makes a very good question. Is the warning always displayed with the MEV relays? Okay, so um, MEV relays are tricky. This is, I admit, probably the worst part of the UX of these websites. And the reason why this is not very good is because we, by default, ask all of the relays because we do not know to which relays you have subscribed, which means that you, if you used to use a relay back in the past and now you don't use it anymore, and in the new relay you have subscribed the right uh, a smooth, the right, uh, the right fee recipient address, but of course, in the one that you're not subscribed anymore, that you, it's been months since you have used it, when we ask this relay, this relay is looking in their list and they go like, oh yeah, Matt Hatter was there uh, and he had his own fee recipient. So this relayer is actually telling us that you don't have uh, set the fee recipient as the smoothing pool. So that's why more often than not, people change relays all the time and the relays that work sometimes better and there's relays that sometimes they work worse. So it's very likely that you'll get a warning, even though you have properly set the fee recipient address. So uh, that's why I wanted to say it via voice because it's very hard to, <laughs> to say that on writing. But, uh, but yeah, I think I was clear enough. If you can confirm on writing that that was clear enough on why you get this warning. Um, basically what it means is that you just need to get back to your Dapnode or to your, um, um, wherever you have your validator. This is for solo stakers, not only for Dapnodes. Um, and if you can just, uh, yeah, get back to that and make sure that your fear is is set, then it will work. And even if there's a warning. Okay, cool. So if we don't have any other questions from the audience at the moment, we can probably finish this uh, tap note crash course. Please, please uh, know that any questions that you might have, you can type them in the smooth text channel. And we'll see you around. Thanks for your interest in Smooth. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Take care.